I want to take this moment. I want to actually welcome all of you who are represented here today. Cranberry Campus, can you guys make some noise? Come on. That's us. Represent. Then we also have our online family and our Newcastle family. Tune in with us as well. Can you guys make some noise for our online and Newcastle family? Guys, we love you so, so much. And we are so thankful and grateful that we get to share this time together as a family. Amen. I also wanted to take this moment and I just want to honor our student ministry pastors, Pastors Ben and Alyssa Archer. Come on, guys. Aren't they so incredible? They have such a heart for the next generation, and they just believe in you guys so tremendously. And it's just such an honor and a privilege just to, to work alongside of them because they are just two of the most incredible pastors I've ever met in my life. Amen? They're just so awesome. I also want to take this moment, and I also want to welcome all of our first-time guests in the room today. Come on, if you are a first-time guest here or even in Newcastle, we just want to welcome you and just tell you we are so thankful and grateful that you are here today. Amen? So before I get into the message, I just want to encourage you guys, lean on in. I know that we like to get distracted a lot. I know that we like to maybe pull out our phones. I know that we like to chit chat, talk, but I'm telling you guys, lean on in because God, the creator of heaven and earth, he is here, right? Amen. His presence is here. It says where two or more are gathered, he is here. So God is here today and I promise you he wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal things to you and he just wants to grow deeper and deeper in relationship with you. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for every single student and leader under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you, Father, that here today, it would not be my words, it would not be my wisdom, it would not be my knowledge, Lord, but it would be by the grace of God. It would be your words that would speak to these students and it would pierce their heart in such a way that they would just be compelled to walk a life with you all the days of their life, growing deeper and deeper in an intimacy with you. In Jesus' mighty name, we all said, amen. amen. Will you guys flip with me to John chapter 18, verse 3 through 11. This is John chapter 18, verses 3 through 11. So to give you some context of what we're about to read is we have Judas, and he's actually one of Jesus' disciples, and he's about to really betray Jesus and hand him over to the Roman, the Roman soldiers really to, to arrest him and, and to crucify him. So we are about to really just unpack this scene where Judas, one of Jesus' friends, Jesus' disciples, is actually betraying him to get arrested. So this is what we're about to read. Ready? You guys with me? Come on, let's read. It says, so Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, he came to the garden guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen, I love that right there. Jesus knew all that was going to happen. He went out and asked them. He says, who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. Watch this. He goes, I am he, Jesus said. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. Come on, there's power in God, right? They literally fell to the ground. It says again, he asked, who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. He was talking about his disciples. He says, this happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Now this is where I want us to, to really just focus in on. Watch this. Then Simon Peter, we know that Simon Peter is one of Jesus' disciples, right? Watch this. So he's about to get arrested. The Roman soldiers are trying to arrest him. It says, then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest servant, cutting off his right ear. Like Simon Peter, guys, like he just goes for it. He takes his sword and he cuts off the right ear of the servant. And watch this. Watch what Jesus says. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? 
So right here, we just see Judas, Jesus' disciple, complete, but completely betray him, completely give him away to the Roman soldiers. And here's Peter, another one of Jesus' disciples, and he's like, what the heck? Right? He's like, Lord, I will defend you, right? And so he takes his sword, and he goes over to the one who's trying to arrest him, and he cuts off his ear. And what does Jesus say? He says, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given to me? To translate that for you, Jesus goes over to Peter and he says, Peter, don't come in the way of me demonstrating the greatest act of love to those ones who are about to crucify me. He's literally saying to Peter, Peter, I know you're trying to defend me. I know you're trying to, to not have them arrest me, but listen, you are actually getting in the way of me going to the cross and doing my Father's will. You are actually getting in the way of me hanging on the cross and demonstrating the greatest act of love to them. The ones who are about to crucify him, the ones who are about to spit in his face, punch him, mock him, whip him. The ones who were about to literally crucify him. He said, Peter, no, 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 no. You can't get in the way because I have to show them how much I love them. I have to demonstrate to them how much I care about them. Wow. What kind of crazy love can I tell you here today that the same love that Jesus demonstrated to the very ones who were about to hurt him, to the ones who were about to abuse him, the ones who were about to crucify him, is the same love that God is saying, listen, I want you to use that exact same love to the ones who hurt you. The same ones who've maybe spoken words over you, that have hurt you, that have made you maybe feel less than, Maybe it's someone in your school that's bullied you. Maybe it's someone that's told you that you're not pretty enough. Maybe it's someone who's told you that you're just not good enough. I don't know what it is. I don't know who hurt you, and I don't know what kind of pain they've caused. But God is saying here today, will you love them? Will you love them? You might be here today and be like, Mariah, that's, that's crazy. Like, I'm in pain. They hurt me too deep. They've hurt me too strong. Like, I can't love them. I'm here to tell you that you can. It says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43, it says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. This is Jesus watching me. He goes, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus is saying today, the ones who have caused you such deep pain, the ones who have bullied you, the ones who have made you feel less than, will you love them? The ones who have rejected you, will you love them? Today, I want to show us and teach us what it looks like to love people who hurt us. That's actually the title of my message today. How do we love people with the same love that Jesus took up on the cross to the ones who have caused us pain? The first thought for us, be content in his love for you. Be content in his love for you. Listen, you'll never be able to love those who have hurt you, the ones who have spoken such horrible words over you, if you are not content and firm in God's love for you. I love it. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, it says, and so we know, Everyone say, we know. We know and rely. Everyone say, rely. We rely on the love God has for us. I love it. It doesn't say for us to rely on the love that we have towards God, right? It says for us to rely and know the love that God has towards us. It says God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. You know, my prayer here today when I was praying before church, and I was really just asking God, Lord, Lord, I know there's going to be people here today who who maybe just be experiencing some some deep hurt, maybe just of what people have spoken over them, Lord. Lord, what is it? What is the word 
Father, that you would have for them? How do they get to walk in love towards these people who have caused them such deep pain? And I felt like the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want my children to be content in my love for them. And out of that, they will not be shaken. I want my children to be so content in my love towards them that they will not be shaken. What does that mean? It means when you are so content and so firmly planted in who God has said and who, what God has said about you, that when other people come and try to speak words over you, try to cause you pain, try to be mean to you, you're not moved. You're not shaken. You're not moved. You're not shaken. Why? Because you know where your worth comes. You know where your value comes. You know where your love comes. I remember this one time, I actually worked at Chick-fil-A. And funny story, they put me in the back with all of the dudes, like, like behind the fryers, behind all of the grease. I remember I would go home at like midnight and I like would have like all of my makeup just like completely off because there was just all the grease, my hair smelled horrible. To give you some context, um, I worked there for about two weeks and then I put my two weeks in. So yeah, I didn't really like the job, but Chick-fil-A is awesome. Chick-fil-A is awesome, it's great. It's the Lord's food, right? Amen, anyone like Chick-fil-A? Come on, so good. Yeah, so I basically worked there, but actually a situation that occurred while I was working there is there was actually this guy who began to just talk really poorly about me. He actually created a group message specifically just to like kind of bash me, make fun of me, say all these nasty things about me. And I remember at the time I found out, I don't know how I found out, but I did find out. And I remember I was just so hurt. Right? I was just so moved by it. I had just felt like all my worth, all my value was just thrown out the window, right? Like, like this person had just completely just like plastered my name. He had, he had said such hurtful words to me. And you know how I responded to it? I wanted to give him a piece of my mind, right? He hurt me so deeply that I was like, you know what? If you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. And so I remember in that moment, I began to talk so poorly about him. I began to gossip about him. I actually gave him a piece of my mind. I let him have it. And the funny thing is, is the reason why I responded out of such anger is because I wasn't content. I wasn't firmly planted in God's love for me. Because I can tell you now, at 21 years young, instead of being 16 years young, when that stuff happens to me now where people might want to say poor things about me or, or say that maybe I'm not this or I'm not that, I don't have to respond out of anger. I don't have to let them have it. I don't have to, to go talk poorly about it. Why? Because I'm content. Why? Because my worth and value is found in Christ alone. I don't have to, to be moved and, and, and shaken by what people have spoken over me because I am so content in the Father's love towards me. It's why it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved. Can I tell you, you can never love anyone until you figure out that God loves you. You can never respond out of love when people hurt you until you are so content that the King of Kings loves you so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Until you taste and experience the love that God has for you, you will never be able to love. You'll never be able to forgive. You'll never be able to, to, to walk away from, from bitterness because God's saying, listen, 
I have to have you first be content in my love, my approval, what I say about you before man. Why? Because your hope is not found in man. Your hope is not found in other people's opinions. And when you are solid, when you are not shaken by their opinions, by what they say, and you are so firmly planted in the king of kings and the fact that he loves you, the fact that he died for you, you will walk in peace and walk in love towards people who hurt you every single time. Every single time. I love it so much. John, he always calls himself the one whom Jesus loves. You will find no record of John being addressed as the one whom Jesus loved except for the books that John wrote. Why is that? Because John knew that he was so loved by God. And where was John during the crucifixion? Peter denied Jesus three times. Judas had betrayed him. But the one who in scripture, it says, the one whom Jesus loved, he knew Jesus loved him. Where was he during the crucifixion? He was at the foot of the cross. John knew that he was loved by God. And out of that, he was able to love people, even the ones who crucified and nailed his Messiah to the cross. You can love people. Why? Because you've been loved, no matter how much they hurt you. Number two is identify the root. Everyone say identify the root. Identify the root. Do you know that when people hurt you, when people say really mean things about you, maybe when people bully you, can I tell you, it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. and It has everything to do with them. When people call you that you're not beautiful, when people say that you're just not good enough, when people say you're not smart enough, when you're not going anywhere in life, when people speak these words over you, do you know that it actually has nothing to do with you? It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. I love it. It says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 8, it says, dear friends, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone say, love comes from God. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Can I tell you, when people cause you pain, when people are hurtful towards you, can I tell you, They have a deficit. They have a deficit in their heart. Can I tell you, every single person has a God-sized hole in their heart, and it's only God's love that can fill it. And so there's people walking around in your schools. There's people walking around in the grocery store with this God-sized hole that is not filled with his love yet. And it says so clearly in the scripture, if we can put that back up, it says God is love. Everyone who loves has been born of God. Can I tell you the reason why maybe people are hurting you, the reason why people are causing you pain, maybe the reason why some people are saying hurtful things to you is because they don't know God's love. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're not this or you're not that. You need to get better at this and you need to get better at that. Can I tell you it has everything to do with the fact that they have not tasted the love of God. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. Have you ever heard that saying, hurting people hurt people? Hurting people hurt people? Can I tell you, there's people walking around with insecurities. They're walking around with deep hurt. They're walking around with deep brokenness. They're walking around with with family problems. And they are walking around hurting. And they're hurting people. There was this one time... I was at work, and it wasn't Chick-fil-A. I was actually working at the hair salon. Um, And to give you some context, I worked there for four and a half years. I I didn't quit after two weeks this time. So four and a half years, I was working at the hair salon. And there was this girl who came on in to get her hair done, and she was just so nasty. She was just so bitter. I remember she's sitting there in the chair, and she's just literally gossiping about people who were sitting in the salon, other clients who were sitting there. She's just talking about them saying, oh my gosh, why would she want to get her hair done like that? Oh my gosh, like look at that outfit that she's wearing. Like she was just being brutal. And I remember I was like, 
my gosh, right? Like, this is horrible. Like, someone better say something to her. Give her a piece of her mind. Like, like what's going on? And I remember I had gotten her to shampoo her hair, and I was like, of course I get her, right? And as I'm shampooing her hair, the Lord speaks to me, and he convicts me, and he says, Mara, I want you to pray for her. I was like, okay. So I'm praying for her. And then I go into the back room after I'm done. And my boss comes, and she's like, Mariah, oh, my gosh. My heart breaks for her. And I'm like, what? Your heart breaks for her. Like, do you see how rude she's being? She's like, no, Mariah, listen. Her husband's actually in the hospital right now, and he's dying from cancer. Like, her husband's actually in the hospital, and he's dying. He's dying from cancer. Can I tell you, when you look at a person through the same eyes as Jesus, we don't justify their behavior, but we know the root. We know the root. And instead of being moved by anger, being moved by wanting to maybe give them a piece of our mind or feeling hurt, we begin to be moved by compassion. See, this girl who came into my salon, I thought maybe she just, you know, there was something wrong with us. Maybe the words that she was saying was, was, was right. But actually, it had nothing to do with us. What she, what she was saying had nothing to do with who we were. Her husband was dying of cancer. Dying of cancer. Listen, guys, when people hurt you and people maybe say just really rude things and, and you feel like, oh, my gosh, like my value, my worth, like maybe this is who I am. Maybe I'm just in so much pain. Can I tell you, when you know the root issue of it, when you know that it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the fact that there is a deficit in their heart. You will not respond in anger, but you will actually respond with such compassion and love every single time. I believe right here, right now, there's, some, there's like freedom just coming through. Some people who, who have been experiencing such pain, maybe you feel like you were the mistake. Maybe you felt like you were the problem. Maybe you felt like the reason, oh my gosh, did you guys just hear that? Siri just rung on my apple. Oh my gosh. Okay, anyway, squirrel. Oh my gosh, Siri, please. She's going nuts. Okay. But when you think that maybe you're the problem, maybe you feel like, the words that they've spoken over you is, is who you are. Can I tell you, you need to understand the root issue. There are people you pass every single day who might hurt you, but you have to know there's a root issue. And it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with what you lack. It has nothing to do with who you are. It has everything to do with that they have a deficit. They have a deficit of knowing the God's love and kindness. God's love and kindness. Number three, this is our last point. Love always looks different. Love always looks different. Listen, when, when, when people hurt you, when maybe people bully you, when people maybe have just like dragged your name through the mud, can I tell you, loving them doesn't, doesn't mean that you gotta go be best friends with them, right? Like Snapchatting them, hitting them up, texting them, hey, I love you so much. Like, that's a little bit creepy, right? Loving them doesn't have to be this thing where, where you get super close with them, with the people who have hurt you and betrayed you. But love can look like praying from afar for them, right? Praying from afar, praying a blessing over them praying healing over them, praying that, that God would heal their heart, that God would chase them down, and that they would understand the love of God. Maybe love looks like when others are talking poorly about them, you decide to talk highly of them. Girls, can I have your attention? But maybe when, when, when people are gossiping about them and saying, oh my gosh, that person is just so rude, they're this, they're that, you know what I mean? Start gossiping. Maybe love looks like you saying, hey, guys, no, 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 no. We're not going to talk bad about them. There's a deficit in their heart. And talking poorly and evil in them is not going to fix the solution. 
It's showing them how much they're loved. Showing them how much God loves them. Maybe loving them looks like when they come around, you smile at them. Right? I know there's been times when I was in school and someone rubbed me the wrong way, the last thing you want to do is smile, right? You want to you roll your eyes. You want to give maybe a snarky comment. But can I tell you, maybe loving someone who's hurt you is just smiling at them and letting them know, listen, I'm not mad at you. I've forgiven you. Maybe I'm not going to get super close with you and have that relationship with you just to set up boundaries and protect yourself. But maybe it's just a smile. Maybe it's letting them know, listen, I love you even though you've hurt me. Number four, maybe it's forgiving them in your heart even if they didn't ask for forgiveness. Maybe it's forgiving them in your heart even if they didn't ask for forgiveness. I love it. We love because he first loved us. We forgive because he first forgave us. Everything comes after the fact that Christ has done it first. That Christ has accomplished it first. Guys, the same way, the same way that Jesus told Peter, shall I not drink from this cup? Peter, don't get in the way of me demonstrating how much I love them. But God, they're about to crucify you, I know. Peter, don't get in the way of me showing how much I love them. But God, they're about to nail you to a cross. I know, but I want to show them how much I love them. But God, they're about to spit in your face. I know, Peter. I'm about to die for them, Peter, because I love them, because I love them. Listen, guys, I don't know who's hurt you. I don't know who's caused you pain. I don't know what lies have been spoken over you. I don't know who's told you that you're not good enough, that you're not pretty enough, that you'll never measure up, that you're not, you're not smart enough, that, you, that you're never going to go maybe into college, that, that you're not going to have a purpose or, or whatever it is. I don't know who has caused you pain. I don't know who's rejected you. I don't know who's abandoned you. But God is saying, listen, I need my people to be so content in my love towards them so content, not moved, not shaken, and to understand the root issue. Why? Because he knows that out of that will flow rivers of living water. He knows out of that you can begin to love that person who's called you that name. He knows that you can begin to, to forgive that person who's hurt you tremendously. He knows. He knows. Can everyone just bow your heads real quick? I feel so strongly in my heart that there's people in this room today that, that someone has spoken something over you and it's just traumatized you. It's made you feel so less than. It's made you feel like you're not good enough, that you're never gonna measure up. Maybe it's pain that you've carried all of these years. Maybe someone abandoned you. Maybe someone rejected you. If that's you today, can you simply just raise your hand? Can you lift up your hand? I see that hand. See that hand right here I just want to pray a blessing pray a blessing over you pray a blessing over the one who hurt you because remember there's a deficit there's a deficit there's a God-sized hole and God's love is the only way to fill it come on can we just pray Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for every single student and leader under the sound of my voice. 
Lord, I thank you that right now your love would wash over them. It would wash over them, Lord, right now. Right now, your love would wash over them, that they would be so persuaded that your love is enough. Your love is enough. What you say about them is enough. Lord, I pray for that person who has hurt them, who has caused some sort of pain in their life, and I pray a blessing over them, Lord, that they would come to know you, Lord, that they would come to know your love, they would come to know your grace. Lord, and there would be a mending, there would be a mending in that relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can keep your heads bowed. I want to take this moment, and maybe you're here today, and, and we're talking about Jesus, and you're like, Mariah, I don't even know him. I've never even had a personal relationship with him. I've never received him into my heart. I want to give you that opportunity to not say yes to religion, to not say yes to a set of, of roles that you have to live up to, but to say yes to a personal, intimate relationship with a father who is so madly in love with you. If that's you today here, and you've never given your life to Jesus, and you want to here today, can you simply just raise up your hand? No one's looking around. I see that hand. I see that hand. One more moment. Pray out this prayer together where you hear it. Say, dear Jesus, I receive you into my heart. I receive you into my life, and I thank you for the cross, the greatest act of love that you've displayed for me. You are now my father, and I am now your child, and you will never walk away. I am forever yours. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Come on, guys. That is the best decision you will ever make in your life. If you made that decision, you could text the word CHANGED to 97,000. You'll receive a 14-day devotional as well as a personal video from our student ministry pastor, Pastor Ben Archer.